Majority are saying <coughs> B. Okay, so this is the construction management. The only difference between construction management and management contracting is where you spot the construction manager. This construction manager is effectively the, the consultant, or if you want to call him the contractor, call him the contractor. But he's a consultant, the one who's managing, yeah, management consultancy firm. Okay, so what he's doing, he's paid a fee by the client to supervise all these people, trade contractors, consultants, or whatever. You know, he's the one managing these people. But the direct relationships, the contracts, are between the client and all these people. So if there is any claim, the claim will go directly to whom? The client, because it is a contractual relationship. Any problem that you are facing, Mr. Client, please respond. These people are only trying to make sure that the progress is okay and everyone is paid on time, you know, the, the planning, the cost, and the quality measures, safety measures are implemented, like any normal consultant in the job. Now, the only difference between that and manual contracting is where you take this one from here and you put him here. So now, because he's going to manage the contracts of these people, we call him management contractor. He's managing those trade contractors. So the client will have a peace of, a peace of mind because he's only communicating with one party. One party only. Now, if you just notice something, that this is one of the practical aspects that I want you to look at. The pricing options. Look, it is standard fee contract. What does it mean? The cost of this project will not be known until you finish all the procurement of these packages. And if this package will cost 100 million, for example, this guy will put his margin on that and the client will pay this the margin and will pay this the actual cost. Okay, this is how it works. So these people will not say that the cost will be 300 million. They will say whatever cost is going to happen, it is going to cost a plus for them. Whatever cost is there, we will have a fee. But one of the things that you need to consider at this stage, if this particular management contractor is going to be paid his fees regardless of what's going to happen here. Take the scenario where Mr. Con Mr. Cladding contractor, okay, had a dispute with the management contractor regarding the design or workmanship or any, any, any problem with the, with, the, with, the, with the project. And they go to court, okay, they go to court. So what's happening, this guy will appoint lawyers to defend the claim. Who's going to pay for the claim? Who? Eventually, who's going to pay for that claim? The client, right? Because we said these people are all are going to get their fees at the end of the day. They're only managing. So what incentive have if they are going to, to be paid their full margin? Do, will they appoint their lawyers and they spend a lot of money to defend the case that they don't have an interest in? They will never do that unless you give them incentive. One of the major problems that we face with these procurement routes is this. In practice, you cannot do it this way. In Federation Square in 1997, have you, have you heard about Federation Square problem? This project, Federation Square, in 1997, the government announced that, okay, we want to build a hub, you know, for tourists and for attraction zone, and it was the area where it is now, you know. So, so what they have done, they said, okay, we want to have something which is special, so they announced a competition. The best designers will be appointed. And eventually they appointed some party called Lab. Have you heard of Lab? Lab was the eventual winner of the competition. And the surprise for all of you is that Lab have never done any project before. It was their first project ever. And the project was so difficult, was so complicated in a way that no one without prior, prior knowledge and expertise can run and try it. Even if you get the best builder, you have a designer who doesn't know how to build. So all buildability or constructability aspects will not be considered. And the project failed not because of the procurement route. We started with what? You know which procurement route they used? They used management contracting. They started with that, this one. But because the client, the, because Multiplex was required to assign lab under their umbrella by innovation, because the client, the public sector, cannot take risk. They are risk averse. You know, risk averse means that I cannot take risk. I'm so cautious about taking risks. Any client who is public entity cannot take any risk. They are not risk takers, because they are publicly funded and the taxpayers will go behind you. Remember the first uh, uh, video. 
about taxpayers who can protest if, you, if they don't get value for money for, their, for the money they pay to the government because it is their money. You, you, you sponsor the project from the taxpayers' money. So what happened? Multiplex was assigned the tax of, of management of, of the project, but the client felt that the project has so many risks, risks of design. So he tried to have lab under the umbrella of Multiplex, but Multiplex refused. You, we cannot, you cannot shift that risk to us. You know what is the rule of thumb of if you want to transfer any risk? I look at any risk. How can you transfer a risk in any project? How can you transfer the risk? The rule of thumb is that you transfer the risk to the party best able to handle that risk. So who is the best party able to handle any design risk? The designers. Excellent. So why you just don't leave it with the designers and if there is anything wrong, you just penalize them and you get compensation. Leave these people alone. Let them just construct. Let them construct. They will do a good job. And eventually there was a major dispute and later on they changed that procurement route from management contracting to back to square one, construction management. Because they, they couldn't convince Multiplex to take that risk. Among other things, we have so many things and the client wanted to get involved more and more to have more control on the budget because the budget was exceeding the, the limits. It stated. Okay, so, so it's not about the procurement route anyway. It's about what? The selection of players. You may get any contractor, any designer, if they are perfect, any procurement route would be okay. In general, the project will be successful. The problem is what? Whether it could be more successful if we follow this route or that route. But the failure is not only attributed to the selection of the procurement route. It has nothing to do with that. It has something to do with the people, with the behaviors, with the attitudes and knowledge of the concerned people.